What's up, Parkview Kids? I'm Greg. Welcome to the November 2022 edition of Parkview Kids Online. Happy Thanksgiving. I'm so excited that you guys are here. So let's all stand up and worship God together. When I wake up, when I wake up, I know that you are with me every step of the way. You're strong enough, you're strong enough to handle any fear that I face. Even things that scare me, cause they seem too big. Even all the hard things that make me wanna quit. You're bigger than it all, and you're in charge of it. I don't feel so worried when I look to you, Jesus. believe what I just found. What? The multiverse? The multiverse? What is the multiverse? Oh, come on, you know, like in the movies. Uh, oh, you mean that place that has like an infinite amount of universes with infinite versions of ourselves? There's no way that place is real. That looks like a Christmas ornament. Yeah, in this universe. Let me see that. <laughs> oh. Brandon, what did you do? <laughs> You just broke the multiverse. John, for the last time, there's no such thing as the multiverse. Things just got out of hand. Show. I'm Brandon, that's John, and we are excited about today's show. Yes, we are, because we're talking about courage. That's right, and today we have a very special guest, and I am—I have to say, I am extremely excited about this. I'm a big fan. I even brought us along, I brought the, uh, oh man, I, uh, I forgot something that I want him to sign. I'll be right back, you know, you know uh, cover okay, for me. Okay, okay. I'll be right back. Uh, I guess I'll just, uh... was that a knock at the door? I... Brandon, I think he's here. Um, uh, okay, please welcome someone who knows stuff. Someone who knows stuff. Uh, someone who knows stuff.
Hello? Hello. Hi. Uh, would, you, would you like to come in? Oh, indubitably. And, and have a seat? Oh, yes, that would be most appreciated. Now? Oh, ha, yeah, yes, of course. <laughs> Thank you, whoever you are. Yeah. Let's see, where do I begin? So many choices. Uh, don't, what if I mess up? I don't, whoa, ha, <laughs> Oh, most appreciated. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. I'm sorry. But what, what did you say your name was? It's John. Ah, thank you, Super John. Or do you prefer John Man? No, just John is fine. Mm, very good. Just John. Thank you for the hospitality. Actually, do you know why I've been summoned? I'm not going to have to do anything serious or alarming, am oh. I? Oh, no, no, I, 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 I don't think so. My, my friend Brandon, he's a huge fan of yours, and he just thought we'd, you know, have you on the show to talk about courage oh. and being a superhero. I see. Why don't we start with TR and what you know? Oh, oh, oh yeah, that would be splendid. Yes. I am Captain Anxiety, <laughs> and I know many, many very heroic things. Great. Mm. Uh, tell us why it's important to have courage when you're a superhero. Absolutely. Courage. You know, that's not really my strong suit. It's not my speciality, if you will. I, I'm more of a person who likes to run, hide, and uh, scream like a fainting goat. Like a... Ah! Oh. Um, hmm. That's really my modus mm -hmm. operandi, if you will. I, uh, 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 you know, you know, there's lots of ways to stand up for what's right. You are correct, Just John. For instance, I like to make sure no one does any over-squeezing of the avocados in the grocery store. You can make sure they're ripe, but any more than that and you've crossed the line. Sure. You know, you know, looking out for those that don't have a voice in our society is an incredible way to stand up for others and show courage. Hmm? So, so what do you usually tell the over-squeezers? Oh, ho, 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 ho. <laughs> yeah. I don't usually say anything. I don't want to step on anyone's toes. So what I do is usually stare at them with my ubiquitous eyes of judgment. Mm, that usually elicits the desired response. Mm. Oh yeah, I bet. Uh huh. Uh huh. Don't take this the wrong way. I, uh, you just seem to be a little, uh, I don't know, scared to be a superhero. <laughs> not a truer word was spoken, just John. But fear should not deter one from being heroic. A hero should endeavor to do what's right despite his or her fear. At least, that's what I read whilst perusing the hero's handbook. Oh. You can have that, I have many. Oh. I even signed it. Oh, wow. Oh, <laughs> okay, thank you. Mm, yes. Um, uh, you know, you know uh, Brandon's gonna be so sorry he missed you, uh. but thank you so much for coming on the show today. You were very, very, Enlightening. Oh, oh, yes. Anytime, just John, tell your friend hello from me, All right. Captain Anxiety. I depart. Ah. Uh, oh, you just, you, no, no, you, it, it opens inward. You this pull it. This barrier has been placed ah. here by my arch nemesis. Yes. Just, just here, hold on a second. Nope, nope. Ah. There you go. Much appreciated, Just John. Sure. Doors are my kryptonite. Mm. Also, pickle jars are my kryptonite. And I'm not so fond of, well, kryptonite. <laughs> but no matter, I depart. <laughs> oh, watch out for that parking meter. Okay. Is he here? Oh, oh, you just missed him. What? Oh, man. I knew I was taking too long. Oh. What'd he say? 
Uh, he talked about, uh, oh, uh, when he first came in, he was really nervous. Oh, yeah. You know, oh, and, yeah. Uh, and scared. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but but he had some amazing things to say about not letting his fears keep him from being a hero. Well, he is Captain Anxiety after all. <laughs> I knew he'd be a great guest. Oh, he also told me to tell you, hello. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Eddie, Eddie, Eddie. Oh, he gave me th this to give to you. The Hero's Handbook. <laughs> oh, and he signed it. Uh -huh. Apprehensively yours, <laughs> Captain Anxiety. This is the greatest day of my life. Oh. It's Bible story time with Kellen. Hey guys, I gotta say, Captain Anxiety was something special. That's a good way to put it. What have you got for us today? Well, as Captain Anxiety demonstrated, sometimes heroes aren't the ones you usually think of. That's what today's story is all about. And we're gonna tell it with Laundry Theater. Today's story comes from the book of 1 Samuel in the Old Testament. The Israelites had a king named King Saul, but instead of doing what God wanted him to do, Saul did what Saul wanted to do. So God decided there should be a new king and told one of his prophets, a priest named Samuel, to go and find one. So Samuel traveled to Bethlehem to meet with a man named Jesse. He informed him that one of his sons would be the new king of Israel. Now the first son, Eliab, definitely looked like a king. And Samuel thought this had to be the one. But God spoke to Samuel and said, do not consider how handsome or tall he is. People look at the outside of a person, but the Lord looks at what is in the heart. He will not be the new king. Jesse had six other sons stand in front of Samuel, but God told Samuel that none of these would be king either. Samuel asked Jesse if he had any other sons, and Jesse sent for his youngest, David, who was out tending the sheep. Now, David was extremely young and smelled of animals. He was far from looking like a king. But once again, God looked in David's heart instead of his appearance and knew that this would be the next king. Now, David was not king yet. He was still tending his father's sheep. And King Saul, well, he had no clue that a new king had even been lined up. You see, Saul was busy trying to stop an invasion from the Israelite enemies, the Philistines, and Saul had run into a problem, a nine foot tall problem named Goliath. Goliath was a soldier for the Philistines, and every day Goliath would walk down into an open field and offer a challenge of single combat to any Israelite. If anyone could defeat Goliath, the Israelites would win the war. Unfortunately, the Israelites were terrified and no one was brave enough to face Goliath. This went on for 40 days in a row. Finally, David was sent to the front lines of the battle to bring his brothers some food. When David arrived, he heard Goliath's challenge and he was angry that no one had offered to fight him. When King Saul heard that David was volunteering, he sent for him but quickly told David that he was way too young. But David insisted. He told Saul that he had fought lions and bears to protect his father's sheep and that he would fight this giant to protect Israel. God had saved him from wild beasts and God would save him from Goliath. So Saul agreed and let him face the giant and he gave David his own armor to wear, but it didn't fit. Instead, David went to the riverbed and chose five smooth, small stones to be his only protection. The next time Goliath made his challenge, David stepped right in front of him and faced the giant. Goliath made fun of David, but David stood his ground and he said, you come against me with a sword, 
but I come against you in the name of the Lord, and he will give me victory over you. As Goliath charged, David took a stone from his pocket and he flung it with everything he had and hit the giant. The stone hit its mark and Goliath and the Philistines were defeated. David had faced his fears and proved that it is the hero's heart that matters, not the size. The end. Well, I guess David had practiced going up against lions and bears, so, so maybe Goliath wasn't as frightening to him as he was to the other Israelites? Lions and giants and bears, oh my! <laughs> you know, from the, never mind. David also had practiced asking God for help. God had gotten him through some tough spots before, so David knew nothing was impossible with God. You know, David and Captain Anxiety have something in common. They both might not look like superheroes, but it's what you do and what's in your heart that's the test of a true hero. Yeah. Oh, hey, thanks, Kellen. Awesome story. Thank you. And until next time. Well, that was unexpected. <laughs> Do you think Captain Anxiety ever had to face a lion or a bear or, or something that seemed impossible? <laughs> no. But it's time for us to reveal the question. What seems impossible to you? Oh, okay, I remember in school there would uh, be tests that I was 100% sure were impossible to pass, but I would study and practice. Then you would pass? Not all the time, oh. but the studying gave me the courage to take the test and know that I had done my best. Well said. Thank you. When, when something comes up that seems impossible to me, I like to remember God's faithfulness in the past. It, it helps me face what I think is impossible now, mm. because I know that I'm not alone and God is with me. Ah, indubitably. That's a big word for you. No, I learned it from Captain Anxiety. Oh, he's the best. He is all right. I guess that's it for today. We'll see you next week for a brand new show. Woo! You know who my favorite superhero is? Who's that? Guess. Uh, Captain Anxiety. Look into a mirror. And tell yourself, you are loyal and give constant support and allegiance. Ah, this is true. I am very loyal, uh, particularly to my table tennis team. Unless we're playing the Paddington Paddlers, they are frighteningly above average. Tell yourself, you have determination. You show firmness of purpose. Firmness. It's rather squishy. Hmm. I'll move on. Tell yourself, you are selfless. You are more concerned with the needs and troubles of others than you are for yourself. This is also true. Unless the troubles have to do with big scary people, or animals, or bugs, or you know, oversized rocks and twigs, sometimes smaller rocks. I'm not a big fan of dirt or dust. Did you know dust is made up of human skin? Did you know that? Terrifying. See, look, there, there's some right there. That could be you. Ah! <coughs> this is where dust is born. <laughs> Our Bible verse this month, Parkview Kids, learning all about faith, is found in Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. I want to read it to you. Here's what it says Be strong and brave. Do not be afraid. Do not lose hope. I am the Lord your God. I will be with you everywhere you go. Joshua 1 verse 9. All right, Parkview kids, let's all stand up and let's put some moves to our bottom line for this week. Our bottom line is this. You can do what you should even when it seems impossible. So ready from last week, ready? Get your fireball and you can do what you should even when it seems impossible. Ready, let's put it all together. You can do what you should, even when it seems impossible. 
Let's pray, Parkview kids. God, I thank you so much for the story of David and Goliath. It's one of the best stories in the Bible because it seemed impossible. David, a young boy, defeating the nine-foot giant Goliath. It seemed impossible, but you are the God of the impossible. May we never forget that and have faith that you can do the impossible. We love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, Parkview kids. So let's wrap up our time together answering this question. What seems impossible to you? I love you guys. I'll see you next week. Bye.